That's it. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. We're here at Go Fast Campers. So I came out here to GFC crop field where all of the Go Fast Campers are grown. So here we have some, they're about ready for harvest. We're gonna throw a super light on this cross check so we can check it out. This is your, I guess what, your retail? Yep, this space. is our retail space. Retail there. space. Does this have a town name? Town? This Re is retail, retail town? town? Retail town. Retail town. Anyway, so this video, I'm up in Montana and we're gonna be talking about GFC, their operations, kind of talk about the company a little bit, what they got going on uh, for 2021. I'm gonna talk about the new Superlight and we're gonna talk about the V2 camper. Anyways, this is Graham. All right. Graham is, I don't know your title. You're do all, do all the things. Uh, head of Instagram. Head of Instagram. <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah. head of crap talking. Exactly. No. Uh, so Pretty much. Graham does a lot at GFC and he's gonna be telling us a little bit about the company and we've been chatting. It's actually like halfway through the day. I'm like filming you, but I'm talking, this is weird. So we've been hanging out for most of the day and he's just been kind of telling me a lot about operations. We've been checking out robots and their processes and all the assembly and everything. A lot of it is done in-house or locally mm -hmm. or somewhere in the US. So that's all their aluminum extrusions, their material, sewing it together, anodizing, all that stuff. We'll get a little bit deeper into that in a second, but most of that's done out here in Montana. Yep, yeah, basically everything, especially on the campers, yeah. done here in Montana. Within a few minutes actually of where we're sitting, standing right now. Yep. So that's cool. And then I'm gonna just kinda let Graham talk for a little bit about what makes GFC special. So, yeah. <laughs> so at GFC, like Mike said, we do take pride in American manufacturing. We do have a couple of international source components on the Superlight, but it's still largely USA made. Uh, we're just very transparent with where things do get made because we're so focused on making things here in house. One of the big things that we're focused on right now is basically automation and becoming globally competitive cost wise with US manufacturing, even at like a relatively small scale. So our goal is to basically revolutionize American manufacturing and bring those bring that back to this country. We've seen so much offshoring in the last 40 years. It's really important to us to basically get that American middle class, get those real jobs back to this country. And we're building all the tools to do that. So more than just building campers, our bigger goal is actually innovating American manufacturing. But the best way to do that is by building cool stuff. So campers are cool, we build campers. We've been pretty ambitious with our camper production from the start. So we started in October 2017 is when we officially announced. So we're a little over three years old now. And we, I believe we have like 1,100 campers out in the wild now. And we're building, right now we're building 15 a week, but our goals are to hit really high numbers this coming year and really cut our lead times down. People think that we're small because our lead times are so long, but honestly, we're just busy. And that's, really what we set out to solve with V2 and with Superlight production is we're really kind of stepping into like our next scale because this is a completely um, private business. We bootstrapped it and we're really focused on long-term sustainable growth. We've got 40 employees now um, making real jobs here in the States and we're pretty stoked about it. We just raised our minimum wage at the shop $25 an hour and our goal is to bring on more and more automation processes so we can keep that pay really, really high and uh, basically make living wage jobs in the valley. So this is, will contain everything for one camper? This is a camper. Okay. Yep. Square pad. All right, so now we're heading over to Fabric Town. It is a Saturday, so most people have the weekend off, which is nice. Saturday, so we got a skeleton crew working on a few things here and there. So this is what GFC calls Fabric Town. Yes, yeah, so we have Metal Town, Fabric Town, Assembly Town, Shipping Town, Engineering Town, and uh, the retail space. Where's Snack Town? <laughs> Got a big CNC fabric plotter. So what this does is it actually lays out all the material. This guy runs around, cuts it all out. So all that stuff is as automated as it can be for now. Um, here's just 
what we get the material as. So we basically just purchase raw yardage of tent fabric, and then everything is cut and sewn um, to our specification here in house. So basically all of our fabric manufacturing is domestic, which is pretty rare for a tent company. Yeah. And got some heat presses here. All the fabric is welded together more like a raft than it would be like a, like a traditional sewn tent. Here's individual panels before they get sewn into a final assembly. So you can see all that stuff's heat welded instead of sewn, so it's a lot more waterproof. Um, Burley YKK zippers all the way around, new passage for our Keter track, and uh, yeah, bug mesh, everything's super burly, kind of built like the camper. So all the mattresses are upstairs, and then um, we have all the cushions, all that stuff gets stuffed up there. Okay. All the foam source from the United States as well. Nice. You a shop dog? So assembly town is where I'm assuming assembly happens. Exactly. Right? So these are all the powder coated panels um, back from powder coat, ready to get assembled onto, onto campers. So I've got gas struts and latches and gaskets already assembled. <laughs> Lots of dogs at GFC. Yeah, so basically all those carts come in, all the components get all ready to assemble, and then these are the final assembly tables. Okay. So they build five of them, at, or four of them at a time right now. So basically the tents come, sit on here, built yep. up. Exactly. And then they bring the canvas over and attach that into the tent here? Yep. Yeah, so all the billet machine parts go together, all the fabric, all the space frame tubes, all the upper tent extrusion, honeycomb panels, all the honeycomb gets cut on our saw down the way. Okay. This dog really wants to be in your video. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to like go out to the desert or something, you can just like pop them all off and okay. have it basically be a bed rack. So these are all campers with no panels on them. And we're still dialing in the fixed string from the old carts. That's why they're all ratchet strapped in place right now. Gotcha. But this is a V2 space frame and upper pop top assembly. So these are V2s, huh? Yep. Yeah, these are the first production units. So you haven't sent any V2s out yet? No, we just literally started manufacturing them this week. Okay. So this is our first weeks of production. Cool, so these are tents, all the fabrics in already. Yep, yeah, the floors aren't in place right now, which is why they're hanging down. Yeah. Yeah, it's that tumbler. Okay, so here's some more robots, huh? Yep. Yeah, so these are all of our component machines that are doing like smaller parts. Like these are all the, the hinges that'll go onto the V2 camper, or the corners anyway. So the robot basically drops the part in the mill, um, fixtures it, machines all the processes, goes in and grabs it again and flips the part over, does the final op, takes the part out and puts it in the box. So that way we can afford to basically be competitive with Chinese manufacturing costs while still manufacturing domestically just because the cost is super low when you're hiring robots compared to people. Yeah, these guys work for cheap. And so this arm well. will come out, er, grab a block of CNC or a block of aluminum, drop it in, that guy does his job, then the robot reaches in, grabs it, and drops it in the bin. Exactly. Here he goes. Speak of the devil. It's going to work. Pretty damn cool. <laughs> I'm always amazed every time, and I've seen this a lot. <laughs> like every day. Because <laughs> the robot almost looks human <laughs> for some reason. Nice work. Good job. <laughs> Proud of you. Back so to it. So he's gonna go find material now. Uh, so, so he's, he's like, yeah, my job is done on that part. Now my next job. Yep. So he's gonna go hunt for stock. Making sure there was no block underneath it. That was what that passing swipe was. Okay. And then now it's fixturing itself. So he's gonna go back and get ready because so he's and... gotta grab that part out. Exactly. And then he'll yeah. put it in this bucket with all these other finished ones. And then keep doing that as long as we give him material to do it with. This is what it's making. So then all these shavings are recyclable. Yep. They get melted down and then turned back into chunks. Exactly.
should have baskets of like really small stuff. So that's like the smallest part we make. Yeah. Yep. So this is one of the final V2 prototypes that's been out in the wild getting tested around Colorado yep. and Utah. And Graham was just telling me about how they're super agile, so there's a few things that could be improved. So then they just change up a couple of your operations in-house and all we wanted them to so we swapped those out that's calvin <laughs> hey calvin and then uh really intricate like dovetail style latching assembly i don't know if you can catch that with the camera but yeah yeah mm -hmm. that is super intricate in there like outside of guns you don't see machining like this or, like maybe motorcycle parts yeah even in the gun space i mean you definitely see some intricate stuff but like, where do you go to buy anything like this? You know, like, where else can you own something that's like this nicely made? It's beautiful. But it like has like, real like, good engagement. We have something special back here in the corner, right? Yeah, so one of, the, uh, one of the things we're all about is like really fast prototyping. And it's better to try something and have it fail early on than like limp it along forever. So this is something we built in like a weekend when we first started the company. And right now it's covered in plasma table dust because it was sitting there forever. Yeah, I drew a heart on it earlier back here for you. <laughs> here it is. Oh, nice. <laughs> so yeah, it's being used for storing some customer accessories right now. But this is our very, very first prototype. So it had the transforma floor system in here, um, some really ghetto honeycomb panels but it still works. I mean, I think it lived outside for a year before it even went inside. Then it sat above our plasma table for two years. And then after a bunch of iterations, we come over here to what we call the V1 camper, I guess. Yep. So then this was the first kind of commercialized camper, I guess, that you guys were making in scale. Yep. And that was based on this steel space frame tube. Exactly. Up in here. So this is what you'll see in any of the GFC campers that are out today, but by growing their scale and improving processes, GFC now has worked on the V2 camper, which we'll show you in a little bit. From the outside, very similar, but fundamentally actually much different. So we're gonna go check out the V2 camper now. Uh, and I've I've kind of Graham's walked me through a little bit, but we're gonna yeah. he's gonna kind of tell me some of the details and and see how I like it. Yeah, and we're stoked to get your impression too, Mike. Because I mean, you've seen the V ones, you've you're familiar with the product, and yeah. like I've been in the weeds on this thing forever, so it's hard for me to be like not biased towards how rad it is. Yeah. <laughs> so for sure. be curious to get your impressions on it. Cool. So I've been teed up on some of the information here. These panels are aluminum powder coated panels. Uh, bent around the edges more so than the V1s because the gasket system is actually different, right? Yep. You're saying the gaskets here are now in these little extruded aluminum parts. And actually what, we can open this one and slide one off, I think I saw yep. you do. Yep, totally. So sealing a camper is kind of tricky because a bed of a truck is natively not very sealed. No problem that So you can seal a camper pretty well, but it doesn't mean the bed of the truck is necessarily gonna be totally sealed. So this is the little gasket. This slides into this little extrusion here. Uh, and these are all proprietary extrusions that you guys have designed, right? Exactly. So I think there's 23 of them now. They design these things and they get an extrusion company in America to make them, send them out in basically long things that you guys cut to size. Exactly. And cut out any holes on the CNC that you need to cut out to the various extrusions. But what that allows you to do is place gaskets where you want them, rather than just sticking like a big gasket on the steel frame. Uh, so what that does is allow you to get a really tight weather seal all along these panels. And then you were telling me earlier, now you can lock and unlock the panels from the inside. Yep. So you don't have to worry about getting like locked a... out by some crazy thing. Cams up and down. Yeah. So and especially then, with our topper that's coming out soon too. Yeah. It really needs to have that, uh, that latching mechanism. So then a lot of these little pieces are just little CNC chunks of aluminum. Uh, they're, they're all around exterior hinges, exterior parts, interior parts. 
So we no longer have the steel welded space frame. Um, so it's a bunch of parts that makes it much more modular. It makes it easier to ship. Potentially, we can have different retail locations and stuff set up. And this will collapse into a bunch of pieces that can be shipped smaller and then assembled where it needs to be assembled. Uh, and just super robust and burly and everything's out of aluminum. And you guys have shaved some weight off of the V2 campers. Yeah, it's well, about 20%. Right? 20% lighter now. Which is now. a lot on 300 pounds. Yeah, so it was already a very light, robust camper, now even lighter and equally robust. Everything's largely the same from like a design functionality standpoint, but uh -huh. every single component is different. Okay. So the only products that carried over are the gas struts and these latches. Okay. That's the only things that are the same between V1 and V2. And this is like no holds barred engineering for us. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking a lot today about all of <laughs> all of the engineering that goes into these things. Uh, I met a couple of them over there and all the robots and just the intricacies of all these little tiny CAD designed parts that they CNC largely in house is just impressive. We're going to pull off one of these thingies or actually up here. Yep. Uh, because these hinges I thought were just fascinating. And you see a camper like this and you're like, yeah, a couple of poles and a couple of panels and you have a camper, but it's really quite a bit more than that. So I was impressed by it and I wanted to just show some of this stuff. So I'm gonna kind of show you some of these little like intricate details. So this is uh, an example of how you guys can fix problems from prototype to yeah. final production swiftly. For sure. Uh, yeah, because we initially tested these by gluing them in place. And so these go right up in here. Yep. Uh, that cover sits in there. And while they were kind of prototyping and figuring out solutions on how these to, you know, block off the extrusion, essentially, they weren't happy with gluing it in. Yeah, after like a couple thousand hard off road miles, we had one of these things fall off. So we decided to use fasteners instead. And this is something that I thought was so yeah. fascinating myself. So yeah. in here, this is obviously, this is this is a plate. You know, this isn't too fancy, but even in and of itself, I kind of nerd out over this. It's and the press fit, beautiful. it presses in and it won't come out unless you grab it and pull. Yeah, so the, the tolerances are insane and it sticks right in there. And obviously there's a little bolt that goes in here, but pull that little piece out. Yeah, so it's got two dovetails, goes up once and then over on the other. So, so this little piece here, and let me just hold yeah. it real quick. Is a little CNC part, if we can get some focus. And just this little part, just look at that thing. So they developed this, and that slides in there to capture the bolt that holds this little end piece on. And those kind of little tiny details that go unnoticed unless you really start taking this thing apart are just incredible to me. Um, but also what it means is a lot of this stuff is serviceable. So if something breaks for, for some reason, rather than the entire steel space frame needing to be replaced in a sense, yep. you can just pop something out. Like, even check. if you got like in a car accident, you know? Yeah. Like we could replace just individual components or even a corner, corner of your camper. Yeah, if you crunch the corner of your camper into a tree yep. or something. Exactly. So, and then, I mean, just from like an assembly standpoint, this thing is just so nice to put together. It's been so cool to watch the engineers come up with all these solutions. But I guess while we're in here, you can see how that hinge works. So that's yeah. the geared hinge that's on the V1 as well as a retrofit. So they call this the embassy hinge because apparently embassy doors use a similar hinge mechanism to where it's essentially uh, not, I wouldn't say bulletproof, but you could literally shoot it portions of the hinge and overall the hinge will continue to function, right? That's yeah. kind of how Graham explained yep. it. So me. it's it's really good in like embassy applications for like people trying to break in because the door will still work, but it'll still stay locked shut, but it'll still operate and open for like bombs and stuff like that. Yeah, so this isn't like a hinge that you'll pick up from a hardware store and bolt on. This is just like a crazy, beautiful piece of engineering. But it doesn't look like anything. <laughs> when the cap's on it, you never even know. Yeah, and we got in here actually, like, and I was playing with this for, before we took the cap off and I was just thinking to myself like, how's this hinge work? Like it's not a piano hinge and it's not like, I don't see anything of what's going on because it's essentially totally hidden once that cap's on. Yeah, same with the just, front hinge on the pop top. Crazy. 
Yeah, and we can't talk about the front hinge. The, the front hinge is called what, Mysterio? The Mysterio hinge. Yeah, so basically we have another hinge up in here where I know how it works actually. So I got a behind the scenes tour. But once we pop this open, the hinge mechanism is fully hidden inside of there. And one thing they did, that, which is minor, the V2 to the, or the V1 to the V2, is they raise the hinge point by what? Like an inch or two inches, you Yeah, said? like two inches. Like two inches. So what that means is when this is opened, you actually get two more inches of kind of foot height in the tent, which is cool. So what we have here is a little kind of uh, demo. Yeah, it's thing. like an example of this kind of back corner. Um, but just to show how this goes together, since a lot of you guys might know that aluminum typically isn't a very strong thing in off-road applications, especially when it's welded. Um, the way we got around that, and we're able to make it super burly and hold up to the reputation of the strongest camper ever built is the way this actually works is there's an aluminum billet piece inside. This is anodized. Big, in, beefy chunk. Exactly. And this is anodized in the production version. But basically, this is where the load is distributed. So rather than like just these little tiny bolts, these little bolts on here actually locate the aluminum billet block and the load's distributed through that whole chunk. And it kind of goes together in a satisfying pop. And there's really like a little cam mechanism in there. Yep. Holding that all together. Exactly. So all that coping, all those machine tolerances are all perfectly coped on the inside. So just really helps get that load distributed and it'll hold up really, really well, even in like hard washboard for a lot of miles or mm -hmm. especially big impacts, all that kind of stuff. So then for those that are completely new to uh, this tent and you're just kind of thinking, oh, it looks like a camper shell or something, right? So this thing pops up, which we'll show in a second, uh, and, and will allow you to gain access from the interior this or one. from the exterior. And this one's missing two of those floor pieces. Yeah, so these floor panels are removable, so you sleep up in there once the panels are in, but you slide the panels to the side to, to gain access. But uh, I guess before we open it real quick, the other thing, well, one of the other of a thousand things that's changed is there's now little locks to lock it closed. Uh, so nobody can gain access to your tent, what you have stored in there, or when you're on a camper, nobody can gain access to the bed anymore. So this is the little lock, cylinder lock, that when is unlocked, allows you to open that. And then when it's locked, actually, so this one's locked, you can't open it. But then when you unlock it, obviously, then you can. And so once those are opened, then this guy pops up. One other change now is that the gas struts are on the inside of the tent, so there's no exterior gas struts like there used to be. We used to have it all snap in along this bottom edge, okay, and now yeah, it's a snaps. keter track instead. Okay, so which the is whole a, thing slides in. Yep, so it's a continuous seal, so the tent kind of appears more taut on the outside, which is nice. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I know there's people that complained about the buttons and snaps, but I never had any issues with any leakage in yeah. my V110, but yeah, that's cool. I think probably a... And there's now a T-slot track on the inside in the sleeping area on the top, so you can mount stuff like up inside of there. Which, there's just a couple more track points. Okay. Like up high, but that's not a huge deal. Nice. Yeah, so some improvements in kind of interior mounting of stuff. Uh, but again, so there's multiple ways to get in here. And one is all of these windows open up. So you can attach a ladder, for instance, here, and entry through here or on the other side. But I think what a lot of people do, and I don't have a camper myself, but what a lot of people do is enter from the inside. So when you're in here, you can kind of use it as a hangout area. So I'm in the bed of the truck hanging out and I can actually stand up. So now I'm standing up in the bed of the truck, if you can tell, and have, I don't know, I'm guessing a seven foot tall person could stand up in this portion and be fine. So then you kind of have a hangout area here. You could kind of have a hangout area here. Again, this thing isn't totally, doesn't have quite all the pieces, but you can kind of hang out over here. Someone can hang out there. And so you just have, a, have an area to chill. But when it comes time to sleep, you just 
climb up here, and then you put this panel back in. And that's how that works. And what I like, some people don't like, is the translucent panel lets in more light in here. Uh, if you really hated that, if you want it to be pitch black, then I guess you could paint or vinyl wrap the top portion, but I like the light. So oh, another cool thing about this one, um, all the panels are now removable. So like if you're gonna go do like mountain bike shuttle rides, basically pop these three fasteners off, pull the gas struts off, which takes a minute, and you can okay. basically remove the entire rear panel. Gotcha. So yeah, if you wanted to pop the tailgate up, but not have a rear panel, so you could have hang your bikes out on the mm -hmm. tailgate or something like that. Yep. Or, or if, if for you're some reason transporting you transporting a bunch of lumber out the back, and you don't want yep. the window up. Yeah, and another thing about that is like the the tent itself, when it's closed, it'll carry 500 pounds on the roof. Okay. So if you wanted to carry like steel home for a welding project, it's got you covered. Gotcha. Yeah, and they have a rack system, uh, crossbars basically you can put on the top, so you can mount stuff. And then this is called, I guess what, cabana mode? Yep. So once these are, all these windows are opened up off of the sides, then you kind of have a hangout yeah. area where- Talk across the bed. Some people can be inside, it can be over here. Especially when the truck's not quite so tall. Doing whatever you need to do. Yep. And it's quite a bit of room between here. And yeah, here. you can climb in like quite easily. Yeah. On the side. So, kind of cool. Kind of cool little party mode. And then, yeah, we didn't talk about it too much, but there's extrusions all, all around the sides here. So you can mount lights or shovels or axes or whatever you, whatever you feel like, really. The V2 tent, platform tent, yeah, will is basically have a lot of the same features. Just this whole upper assembly with a fixed floor. Yeah. And it's a lot lighter than the first one. We haven't finalized the weights, but I'm kind of guessing it's right around 100 pounds. Very cool. So this is it once it's popped up and in camping mode. I can close it. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Show that. You guys know that I like easy setup and takedown. So you already saw the setup, which basically took about five seconds. But takedown is similarly as you pull it down, tuck the sides in, and then clasp it up. So easy. Easy peasy. Yep. Lemon squeezy. Yeah, so this is super light. Yeah, so this we'll start shipping this month. Is one of their remaining prototypes that's very beat up. Kind yep. of a test tent they sent out to a bunch of people, dragged it around, make sure the fabric is as durable as they wanted it to be. So as you're seeing that, just, <laughs> just know that this tent has been intentionally beat up quite a bit. And there's some changes between this and the production unit. Uh, I believe you've changed. Yeah. What, what so all there's a changed? couple little ventilation uh, updates, like some kick panels that hold the tent fabric out when it's all closed up. So if it's in the rain, you've got more ventilation. Uh, this latching system has changed a bit, just in terms of a little cleaner of a system than these daisy chains. Eliminated all this exterior Velcro, and that's pretty much the majority of it. Pretty much it. Yeah, but this one we've been like dragging around the shop floor, kind of doing abrasion resistance testing, all that kind of stuff. Cool. So I wish we had a, a cleaner one to show. So the concept behind this tent is that it's a super lightweight, mm -hmm. 80 pounds, right? Yep, 80 pounds. 80 pounds, so easy to get on and off with, you know, even those with limited upper body strength. Yep. <laughs> and it's really thin. So this has a mattress in it currently, and what did you say? It's like six inches or yep, something? Exactly. Uh, and it can expand. If you see the mechanism, which will change a little bit here, these straps can expand, and so you can put all your bedding or whatever you need to inside of this, and it still fits, but when you want to compress it down super small, it actually compresses down even tighter than this if you remove the mattress mm -hmm. for whatever reason. But it's basically a honeycomb, one inch honeycomb panel on top and on bottom. That's kind of wrapped in a canvas bag, so to speak. And it mounts kind of like you'd, you'd think it would mount. You can't really see it because it's so low profile, but it mounts to these crossbars here and back here. And yeah, I don't know. What's the price point on this? Uh, starts at 1200 bucks. So it starts at 1200 bucks for, it's, uh, it's kind of a hard shell tent. It's kind of a hybrid 
yeah. hybrid hard shell. I mean, it's, sense. it's a hard shell with a soft outer, basically cladding, but it's a pretty durable outer shell too. I mean, not a lot of tents on the market that kind of have this quality of exterior fabric. Yeah, so if you're new to rooftop tents, $1,200 is super cheap. So it's super light and it's super cheap. And it's still like largely made in the USA. So the big thing here that it's not is the fabric. So all the fabric components are internationally sourced, but the honeycomb panels, all the metal components, all the built machine parts are all from domestic or domestically and in-house. Uh -huh. So a lot of the manufacturing and assembly process all happens right down the street. Sweet, and then this is on a little Subaru cross check. I'm sure some of you guys will like this. So they just kind of wanted to test it out on one of the smallest rigs that realistically you'd put a rooftop tent on. So if you're wondering, this is what it looks like. Uh, it's moved forward enough to where you can open the rear hatch. And I don't know, why don't you walk me through anything else that I didn't say while yeah. you're kind of setting it up for us to, to show us how it works. Yeah, so basically... Now Graham's gonna do this at a leisurely pace, can be done faster. So it certainly isn't as easy as the, you know, the, the platform tents, but Correct. still relatively straightforward. Yep. So it has six straps that you'll remove. Uh, and again, these are in a fashion where you can kind of tighten them and loosen them depending on how thick of a load that you have in here. Basically just pop that up and over. And there's this zipper. It goes around. Graham's getting that side. I might as well get this side so I'm not completely worthless. <laughs> and then, so this one you manually pop up. And there's some poles inside here that essentially prop it up as you go. So the poles are inside like this. Graham's extending the other side right now. So kind of like a leg on a tripod or something. Exactly, like a walking stick. Yeah. A ski pole. It's the two monopods that hold it up like so. So then once it's up, it's kind of a similar wedge shaped tent to what you're kind of used to. There's some tolerances here for the hinge in case you have more stuff crammed in there. But you can open this thing wide open. Yep, so the whole thing opens up. For, basically the entire sides kind of open up. Uh, so it can be super, super breezy in there if you'd like to. Or you can close it up if it's gonna be rainy or whatever. This is kind of a super minimal, super lightweight tent. Yeah, so that whole thing. It just works well. Opens up there on both sides. And then, so this is the bug screen. <laughs> exactly, and then you got overhead storage inside. Yeah. So while it is zipper, there's not like a big canvas thing that's flopping around and you gotta worry about. It's kind of nice. Nice and easy. Cool, so that's that. So if you're looking for a super lightweight, uh, a affordable for rooftop tent, tent uh, that's easy to take on and off and packs up to nothing and you can fit all your sleeping stuff inside. That's the super light from GFC. I have a code, not a coupon code, but a code that gets you a free hat that you can only get with the coupon code. It's L-L-O-D, you can use at gofastcampers.com. And you get a hat, it's not here yet, but similar to this, but in OD. So if you're interested in that, use that on the website. And I think that's that, I don't know, Graham, anything else? I think that's pretty much it, yeah. I think that's it. So we're gonna hang out a little bit. I hear there's barbecue on the menu today, tonight. So we're gonna chow down. And yeah, if you have any questions about anything, you could comment them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. You could follow GoFast on, on Instagram. I'll put their tag right here. And yeah. Yeah, okay. give us a call, email us. Available through the website. Yeah. So new products, a bunch of new products. Hope you liked them. 
And until next time, guys, take care.